Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to look at one of the most important theorems in Calculus 1. It's called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. We're going to go through the theorem and then do an example of how to use it. So the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Theorem of Calculus. Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Uh, you can abbreviate it with three letters, FTC, FTC. Sometimes people call this the uh, first fundamental theorem of calculus. And the reason is there's actually a second one. There's also an extended version. Um, there's a video for it in the playlist if you're looking at the playlist, uh, my Calc 1 playlist. Um, so let's take the theorem. It says, suppose, suppose you have a function that's continuous on a closed interval. So suppose f is continuous. on a closed interval, let's say AB, and big F okay, is an antiderivative of little f. So is an anti, I'll explain what that is, derivative of little f. Then, let's pause here for a moment. So we have a continuous function on the closed interval, which seems to be a very common um, requirement for all of the theorems in calculus. And big F is an antiderivative. So what does that mean? That means if you take the derivative of big F, you get little f. So for example, I'll write it here. Say um, big F is x squared. So if you take the derivative of big F, you would get 2x via the power rule. This would be little f. So if you take the derivative of big F, you get little f. In other words, if you integrate little f, you get big F. Now, you could add a number here and nothing would change, right? Because the derivative of a number is zero. You could add a c here, then big F would be the general antiderivative. That's what it's called. It's called the general antiderivative. So basically, if you differentiate big F, you get little f. Or if you integrate little f, you get big F. Same, same thing. All right, so suppose f is continuous and big F is an antiderivative of little f. Then the definite integral from a to b of little f with respect to x is equal to big F of b minus big F of a. So this formula lets us avoid the long way of computing definite integrals. Remember, the long way is the, the limit process, the limit definition, where you have delta x and c sub i. You take a limit of a sum, and you have to use all those formulas. It's a huge, huge, long problem. Those days are gone, right? So this is the easy way to do definite integrals. That's what this theorem is about, okay? That's, that's what it's used for. It connects differentiation and integration, right? Because you can think of this as the derivative of big F. So when you integrate the derivative, you get this, this other creature here which involves the antiderivative. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example and um, I'll show you how to use it. So let's do it. So let's see, um, let's say we have, let me, let, me, let me write, get some more room. Say we have the definite integral from, let's keep it really simple, zero to one, two x dx. Okay, two x dx. So if you wanna use the formula, which I'll write down here, so the formula says that the definite integral from a to b is equal to big F of B minus big F of A. You can identify your little f, and this is not how people do it, by the way. I'm just going to go through it first and show you how to use the formula carefully, and then I'll show you how people do it. So I'm going to call this little f. So little f of x is equal to 2x. So we need an antiderivative of little f. So you would just integrate it. When you integrate this, you get two, and then you add one, right? So you get two x squared over two. Then you can add a constant, so I'll just put plus c. So big F of x would be x squared plus c. All right, just use the power rule to integrate, end up canceling, and that would be the most general antiderivative. It's called the general, an general antiderivative of this function. All right, so now we just uh, plug in the numbers. So this would be big F, uh, and then b is your first number, right? So that's, that goes here, so b minus, and then big F of zero, so that's your A, so minus big F of zero, beautiful stuff. Then you would plug in the numbers, right, so you would get one squared plus C, or just one plus C, so one plus C, minus, and then zero plus C, right, zero plus C. It's instructive to do this, this is not how normal people do this, um, I'll show you in a minute, but 
It's, it's good. It's worthwhile. So here we get 1 plus C minus C. And the C's cancel, right? So the answer is 1. Right? The answer you get here is 1. So that's how you would use the fundamental theorem of calculus if you were sticking to the formula. Okay? So how would you do it if you didn't want to stick to the formula, if you just wanted to do it the shorthand way? The way people do it is typically, well, first of all, they don't write the C. As you notice, uh, the C's cancel, so it's not necessary to write the C. So what you would do is you would just integrate this, and you would ignore the C. So you would get 2x squared over 2, so the 2's cancel. So you would just get x squared. And then there's a couple ways to do it. You can use two brackets, okay, and then put this number here and this number here. Or you could use one bracket. Or if you're really lazy, you can just use a line. So those are the three ways uh, I've seen. So double bracket, single bracket, or just a line. And then you just plug in the 1, so you get 1 squared. You subtract, and you plug in the 0, and so you get 1. So you integrate, don't write the C, plug in the number, subtract, plug in the number, and that's the answer. That's typically how people do it. And so the moral is, when you're integrating now, uh, and it's a definite integral, that means you have limits of integration, that's called the lower limit, that's called the upper limit. Don't write the plus C. If it's a definite integral, don't worry about the plus C. What does this number mean? Ah, well, in this case, since this function is non-negative, right, it's up here, so, whoops, 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 let me do that again. So this is the line 2x, and we're going from 0 to 1, right? So we're finding the area of this triangle, right? So we found the area of the triangle using calculus, right? Well, you know what? Why not? Let's, let's be bold. This line here is 2x, so the y value when x is 1 is 2. We should be able to find the area of this triangle using geometry. Right? Remember the area of a triangle, just for fun, it takes a second, one half base height. Why not, right? The base here is one. The height here is two. Boom, we get one. So via geometry we get one, and via calculus we also, we also get one. So pretty cool. Anyways, hopefully what you get from this video is whenever you have a definite integral, don't worry about writing the plus C, and then just plug in this number first, subtract, and plug in the bottom number. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching and see you next time.